Welcome to Deal Castle, one of Henry VIII's magnificent gun forts, built to defend the south coast of England from invasion. We will be exploring the ramparts and guns, the labyrinthine keep and the atmospheric tunnels in the rounds at the base of the keep. Newly built in 1540, Deal Castle was in open country. Nearby the port of Sandwich was declining as its harbour had silted up. Ships commonly anchored offshore and were serviced from a new settlement along the beach called Lower Deal. In 1630 it had more than 40 houses and was growing quickly. William Bing, captain of Deal Castle, complained of cottages erected near the said castle to the great annoyance of His Majesty's fault. The new town expanded and prospered in the 18th century becoming a very busy port despite lacking a harbour. After the Napoleonic Wars between 1803 and 1815 the port declined and in Victorian times the town turned to seaside tourism. Deal Castle is one of seven forts built in 1539 to 1540 to defend ships anchored in the downs and to prevent enemy troops landing on the local beaches. Three were permanent Deal, Warmer and Sandown castles. Four earth and timber bulwarks or gun forts stood between the castles, all linked by an earthwork barrier creating a defensive line 2.7 miles or 4.5 kilometers long. This illustration drawn by William Stukeley in 1720 shows the area between Deal and Warmer castles. It is one of only two known historic images that show the bulwarks and earthworks that originally stood between these sites. The Downs, an area of sea between Deal and the Goodwin Sands, is sheltered from bad weather during storms. In the 16th century it became a refuge for merchant ships of many countries, sometimes in their hundreds, and from the late 17th century the Royal Navy based warships there. In principle the guns of Sandown, Deal and Walmer castles protected all ships in these English waters. In practice, peacekeeping was difficult when ships of opposing nations or pirates came in. In 1633, they couldn't stop fighting between Dutch ships and Dunkirk pirates, and in 1639, during the Battle of the Downs, Spanish ships were sunk by the Dutch and 2,000 Spanish sailors struggled ashore. Built on the orders of Henry VIII, who reigned between 1509 to 1547. In 1539, Deal Castle was the purpose-made coastal fort, equipped with big guns to protect against an invasion. We are about to enter its core, the Circular Keep. This room has openings in the walls where handguns could be fired and circular shafts that took gun smoke out through the roof. The door on our left leads into the ground floor that is partitioned into rooms, originally to house the gunners of the garrison. It includes a communal hall and kitchen with brick-lined ovens. One spiral stair leads to the basement where we can explore the castle's storerooms and an atmospheric defensive passage, the rounds. Another spiral stair in the centre of the keep ascends to a suite of panelled rooms for the captain who commanded at the castle.
Downs is a passage around the castle, inside the wall at moat level. It contains 53 embrasures, or window-like openings, and one small door in the outer wall. Soldiers could fire handguns through the openings, or rush through the doorway to defend the moat.
these two cast iron guns may have broken during firing. They were fixed in the ground at the far end of the bridge to Deal Castle and used as bollards until the 1960s. Guns were reused in this way when they were worn out, obsolete or damaged. Both are nine pounder guns from the 17th century that fired cannonballs weighing nine pounds or four kilos. The upper gun was made in Sweden about 1690. Both may have served at Deal as nine pounders, also known as demi culverins, were at the castle in the 17th century and 11 of them formed the armament in the 18th century. In early times, Sandown was a wild and little frequented area north of Deal, and in 1539 to 1540, it was the site chosen for the most northerly of Henry VIII's castles in the Downs. Sandown, almost identical to Walmer Castle, had only four semicircular lunettes or bastions around its central keep, as opposed to Deal's six. Both the captains of Sandown and Walmer came under the overall control of the captain of Deal Castle. All three castles were captured by royalist troops for a brief period of about three months during the Civil War, but apart from that Sandown Castle was never involved in action. When King Charles II was restored to the throne, he used the castle to imprison Colonel Hutchinson, one of the men who had signed Charles I's death warrant. Hutchinson lived here a year before his death of pneumonia in 1664. The three castles were in danger from the sea by the mid 18th century and the decline of Sandown Castle began when the sea breached the moat walls in 1785. The castle was briefly patched up in the late 18th century and was garrisoned during the Napoleonic Wars but was then finally abandoned as a military station. Despite suffering severe damage by neglect and storms, the castle was still fairly complete in 1855 when the last captain of the castle, Sir John Hill, died. It was briefly occupied by the coastal blockade and then in 1863 was sold by the War Office as building materials. The site was bought by the Deal Council in 1894. Some substantial parts of the basement area did survive and could be seen until the 1980s but were encased in concrete as part of the new sea wall and are now lost to view. Walmer Castle, built in 1539-1540 was the southernmost of King Henry VIII's castles in the Downs. It was almost identical to Sandown Castle in its design and construction, having a central cylindrical keep surrounded by four semicircular bastions or lunettes, the tops of which were platforms for heavy guns. The building was surrounded by a deep dry moat crossed only by a single drawbridge. Building materials were obtained from a variety of sources, including the monastic and religious institutions closed by Henry VIII when he renounced Catholicism. Both Walmer and Sandown castles were controlled by the captain of the larger Deal Castle. The castle fell into disrepair for some years, but was garrisoned again during the time of the Spanish Armada's threats to the country's security in the 1580s only to be neglected again until it was garrisoned by parliamentary troops in 1642 during the Civil War. It was besieged and captured briefly by royalist troops in 1648 but soon reverted to parliamentary control. This is the only action the castle has been involved in. The three castles were never intended to be lived in 
being built as fighting blockhouses to fight short violent actions against invaders landing on the beach. Walmer would probably have disappeared as Sandown Castle has if it were not for the Duke of Dorset, Lord Warden of the Sinkports from 1708, who built living apartments in the castle. Since then Walmer has been the official residence of the Lord's Warden and over the years it has been modified into a distinguished and comfortable residence. Sitting on a flat, bleak plain and open beach, Walmer Castle was not a pleasant residence until the niece of William Pitt, Lady Hester Stanhope, laid out the beautiful and extensive gardens, using as labourers the soldiers stationed at Dover during the Napoleonic Wars. Pitt was both Prime Minister and Lord Walden and spent most of his time at Walmer. The castle contains many portraits of past Lords Walden and some fine furniture, some of it souvenirs from past Lords Walden who include William Pitt, the Duke of Wellington, King George V when he was Prince of Wales, Sir Winston Churchill and the late HRH Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother. The room where the Duke of Wellington died in 1852 has been preserved as it was, as has the bedroom used by Queen Victoria in 1842. The only other Lord Walden to die in residence was W.H. Smith, son of the founder of the newsagents and booksellers.